And we are back here on First Bite, our midweek podcast, talking all things Jaguars as it relates to the Detroit Lions. We're here with our guest, Rhino Blenis, the uh, staff writer for Big Cat Country, and your managing editor over at uh, The Only Colors. Let's talk DJ Chark, uh, because obviously, probably the Lions' biggest offseason move to date, at least uh, non-in-house one, that is. Uh, so... I want to start, we, we just kind of left off to talk about the, the aggressive free agency nature of, of the Jaguars this season, and it was highlighted by a couple wide receiver moves. So I guess my, my first question is, why not Chark? Why why was Chark out of the building and not part of those, you know, let, let's bulk up our wide receiver room conversations? You know, it was interesting because, you know, prior to free agency, Doug Peterson had made comments that he wanted to bring both Robinson and Chark back. So, uh, you know, I don't know if, if they had discussions with Chark or not, or if they just let him walk or they thought, you know, Kirk was a better replacement for him or what, uh, you know, I think a lot of, of the thing with Chark is he was coming off of a major injury and, you know, he also had some consistency issues there in Jacksonville. So, you know, maybe they just thought it was, you know, best for, for both parties to move on. Maybe Chark himself did, you know, didn't want to come back. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely a little bit curious, though, that, you know, they wouldn't at least have made a better offer from from what I can tell to, you know, keep them around. But, you know, I think we'll move on and Jags will move on and then see, you know, uh, which one ended up making the right move. Well, Ryan, like you said, you know, the, the Jags just decided to go in a different direction ultimately. And they went with, you know, guys like Christian Kirk and and Zay Jones. What? I guess I, I want to ask a question about DJ Shark is that what can he do and what can't he do? You talked a little bit about the consistency issues. Where did those seem to crop up? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny though, right? Because when you look at Shark, he has all the physical tools. You know, he's 6'4", he runs a 4'3", 440, something like that. Uh, coming into the NFL, you know, he's fast, he's a vertical guy. He can go up and get balls, but I think that was kind of the main thing with him is maybe it was confidence issues, but he definitely struggled with his consistency. And, you know, I think not to uh, really quote anything that Urban Meyer said, but one of the criticisms that he had for, for Chark last year coming in was that, you know, he's a big guy, but he didn't play big. He didn't go up and get balls a lot, things like that. Um, and so I think, you know, when, when you're looking at a guy like Chark, you, you look at him and you say, okay, yeah, this guy should dominate. And, you know, yeah. he did in that uh, 2019 season with Gardner Minshew. He was really good that year. Uh, he showed off what he could do. You know, he was a pro bowler. Um, and, you know, I, I, that player is still in there. He just, uh, you know, he has to do it more on a consistent basis. Really, when you look at him, there, there isn't anything like physically that should be holding him back outside of, of course, his, you know, his injury now. So going into this year it might be a little bit different with that, you know, severe ankle injury that he had. But, you know, he should have been a little bit more dominant than he was in Jacksonville. And, you know, I, th I think a lot of it had to do with maybe confidence and consistency issues more so than anything physical. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because I, I do feel like I've seen Chark mention that um, a couple times, you know, whether it's a confidence or a mental thing. You know, he's he said a lot of things about his mental health publicly and, and been an advocate for mental health help. And um, interestingly enough, he's, he had some choice words for the, uh, the urban Meyer uh, regime, as he told the athletic uh, in an article that was dropped earlier this week. And so may, maybe that had something to do with the, the divorce this off season. I know obviously urban Meyer's not there anymore, but could be some lingering feelings and, and some of the things he had to say in his introductory press conference, like saying it, it's, it's nice to be around good people something like that certainly seems like a not so indirect shot at Jacksonville. Maybe, maybe the, the ever popular Trent bulky. We'll see. Um, but, uh, but I, I, you kind of addressed it there a little bit, but I, I guess I want to kind of reiterate. Um, do you, do you think DJ Chark still has it in him to, to be that pro bowl receiver that, you know, a lot of people might look at that as, as a fluke since it's only one year where he put up those kind of stellar numbers. Do you think that's not necessarily a fluke more so that, it's the injuries and, and maybe the, the, the mental side that's been holding him back. Yeah, I definitely still think he has that potential. And a lot of what he, you know, a lot of what he's going to do is obviously going to depend on the quarterback play. So, you know, sure. it's going to go into <laughs> depend on Jared Goff. Yeah. If he's, you know, if he ends up being your starter there in Detroit again, it, which it looks like that way, unless the Lions end up drafting somebody. Um, but, 
So, you know, obviously it's going to be hard for him, if, you know, if, if golf can't hit him consistently, but the, you know, the thing with Chark is like I said, you know, he has all the physical tools and you obviously, you know, his ankle should be a concern. I'm sure that by the time the season starts, you know, he'll be back to hundred percent and he should be good to go. I don't mean, you know, maybe it might affect his, his speed that he had a little bit before, but also, you know, he's going into a situation there in Detroit where he could be that number one guy. Obviously, you know, St. Brown had a, had a great year, uh, you know, breakout rookie year there. And uh, so I think basically, you know, that, that could be a really good one, two punch there in Detroit. And I don't necessarily know that, you know, you're going to get the, the 2019 version of shark, but I think you can get a guy who's going to, to go in there and consistently produce. Are there, um, are there any plays from DJ shark, like throughout his career that kind of stand out as like a defining play that lions fans should maybe check out and say like, Oh, this is when this guy was operating at his, at his best this is when he was playing his best ball this is a number one highlight reel film that every Lions fan should check out yeah I mean definitely like I said it's 2019 film a lot of stuff is going to stand out on there um you know I can't remember who it was against specifically but he had this one play uh in the corner of the end zone uh, a dime dropped in there he, he double tapped both toes right in the corner with the defensive back all over him and uh that you know that's just the kind of stuff that he can do and that he needs to do on a more consistent basis. So I think, you know, certainly look at it, look at his 2019 stuff and look at, uh, you know, just kind of look at what he's done throughout uh, games too. And you can kind of see the game, the, the consistency thing that I bring up where sometimes he's just dominant and sometimes he's kind of a non-factor. So there's definitely, you know, I, I other than that one play, uh, I can't remember anything specifically, but, I, I, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's enough for Lions fans because yeah. all off season long, Ben Johnson and Antoine Randall L have been banging the drum to add wide receivers. And Ben Johnson went so far as to say, like, yeah, like we need a red zone threat, like somebody who can be effective in in that area and, and you know be big and make plays like that. And you know, he certainly as you as you mentioned, like it seems like he fits the bill in terms of all all of his measurables and, and things like that. So yeah, he can definitely be that red zone guy and he can be that vertical guy too, even, you know, further out on the field. But, you know, like I said, he just got to put it all together and, you know, have the confidence that he can do that on an every down right. basis. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the, the lines were essentially missing that guy all season. Tyrell Williams was supposed to be that guy. He gets injured. Uh, Quintus Cephas was starting to be that guy. Then he gets injured. So um, now, now they might have two in Josh Reynolds and, and, and DJ Chark, which is at least a little bit of, insurance um before before we get out of here and and ryan if you got another one um go ahead and be ready but uh i want to talk about the personal side of of dj turk because i've you know i've only met him for for one press conference and he seems like a pretty personal pretty reasonable good guy but um do you have any either stories or or you know things that he did in the community anything like that during uh during his time in jacksonville that kind of endeared him to fans yeah, as you brought up, um, you know, he, he's very open about his kind of struggles with mental health and, you know, as an advocate for that and depression and anxiety and things like that. And I thought, you know, that that was a, a really kind of strong thing for him to do to put himself out there like that. Because, you know, there's that stigma in the NFL where these guys are supposed to be so tough and whatever. And I think that, um, you know, showing that, you know, they're human. I think DJ Shark is very, is very good at that. And, um, you know, you think that, it's very helpful for, you know, people who aren't professional athletes to see somebody like him who's willing to be open about that and, and, you know, get help that they need and do the things that they need. And I think that's, um, you know, what, what you see is what you get with him. And I think, you know, he's going to be a good guy for that locker room and, you know, hopefully he'll be a good guy, a good player on the field who produces too. But, you know, certainly I would have, would have loved for Chark to uh, come back to Jacksonville and, but if he didn't, you know, I'm glad that he, he wound up in Detroit where I can still watch him every week 